The legacy or older VA system operates on several basic stages. First, there's an initial application to the VA for a determination of eligibility for service connection and award of benefits. The second step is for the VA to act on that application and make what's called a rating decision. Once the rating decision is made, if it is unfavorable in whole or in part, then a veteran would file a notice of disagreement and that would take the case to the next stage. At the next stage, a veteran had an option. You could go directly to the Board of Veterans Appeals or you could apply to a decision review officer for review of the decision. We generally encourage veterans to apply for decision review officer review. The reason for that is that the decision review officer has the authority to completely revise the decision, to consider any new evidence, and to talk with the veteran or his or her attorney about the reasons why the decision should be changed. Our experience with decision review officers has been very positive. We've had a number of them grant uh, benefits, sometimes extensive benefits, to the veteran based on new evidence and the opportunity to talk with the veteran or to have a conference with uh, the veteran's representative. However, as I said, there's an option. If for whatever reasons the veteran chose not to go to the DRO review process, then the appeal is directly to the Board of Veterans' Appeals. The same result applies if there was an unfavorable decision by the decision review officer. Again, you can go directly to the Board of Veterans' Appeals. The mechanics of getting to the Board in those cases, regardless of whether it was a DRO denial or the original rating denial, was to have the regional office issue what's called a statement of the case sometimes referred to as an SOC. Once a, a statement of the case is issued, the veteran has a 60-day window in which to file an appeal from that decision to the Board of Veterans Appeals. There is an official form called a Form 9 that is generally used for that, although a letter or statement from the veteran explaining that he disagrees with the decision and wants to appeal is actually sufficient. You don't have to use the specific form. Once the Form 9 or statement has been filed, as long as it's filed within the 60-day period, then the case goes to the Board of Veterans' Appeals. Again, it's a multi-step process. The rating office, the regional office that did the rating, certifies the case to the board, meaning they make a determination that all the necessary documents have been collected, any transcripts have been transcribed, any additional information that was submitted has been included, and all of that is in the collection of documents that are sent to the board. Once the case is received at the board, it is put in docket order and either scheduled for a hearing or, if a hearing has been waived, then set for review based on whatever new information has been submitted. The nice thing about the legacy system is that the veteran always had the opportunity for hearing and always had the opportunity to submit new evidence at the board. Under the current newer system, that's not necessarily true. But those are the pieces that go into the legacy system. Once the case has gone to the board, whatever decision the board makes is the end of the administrative review process. However, if it is unfavorable, there is a further court review process that is available to veterans.